Hello everyone. Uh, today I'd like to uh, show you a little project that I put together uh, using a um, 555 timer circuit from uh, IC Station. And uh, just a little background on what uh, brought this up was I was building some, some uh, timer circuits and fitting them into um, some of the Bedini uh, high voltage uh, uh, experiments and it seemed like I kept blowing out uh, the uh, 555 or the um, uh, opto isolators and <laughs> before I knew it I had a whole handful of parts laying on the table that I couldn't be sure whether they were good or bad and uh, didn't want to take too much time uh, testing them so I thought uh, it'd be a good idea to build a little Text fixture, test fixture that uh, you could keep handy while you're building one of these other circuits and uh, uh, make a, a plug-in situation to check parts. So I have this uh, this um, uh, 555 timer circuit with a little plug-in chip that um, you can take out. Okay, so what I have then is this uh, 555 timer from IC Station. It's a nice little module, and over here I, I'm running through a um, the signal through a, an opto isolator. It's just a general purpose, one of many different kinds. Uh, this diode right here indicates that the opto is working. Of course, you already know the 555 is working because of the diode on the uh, board itself and then this diode over here indicates that the NPN transistor is uh, is working. You can see if I pull this out hard to do with one hand you lose the, the other diode. So this makes it nice to check all your little parts even while you're working. You're going to say you can make this circuit. Well, sure you can. But can you make it for $2.60 and free shipping? Yeah, so there you, there you have it. So anyhow, this, uh, this is portable. And I've got two AA batteries in here. Uh, not AA, AAA batteries. And even though somewhere up here it says that it runs on uh, 5 to 15 volts, I find out that it can run at three, you know, quite nicely. So I'm not going to go into this in depth a, a real lot. It'll take up a lot of time, but I'll post all these specifications under under the video. Uh, basically, this is lower frequency than some of the other timers. I've got other timers here that I'm going to go over later that are not a 555 chip and uh, they're significant in different ways. Um, the, this uh, module, you select frequencies by putting in these little little jumpers and selecting different capacitor ranges. So you can range, I think it's from like 1 hertz to 20,000 uh, 20, uh, hertz, uh, no, 200,000 hertz, depending on what your setting is. Okay, there is some, some small anomaly about these uh, 50, 555 uh, timer circuits, and that's that when you adjust your, your uh, frequency, it can affect your um, uh, pulse width, and vice versa, adjust the pulse width, and it might change your frequency, but most certainly will. So that, that's a little inconvenient, but somebody used, some people have used it to an advantage. Now, what we have here is this... This trim pot here adjusts the frequency, and this one here adjusts the pulse width, or the on time. So, needless to say, this has been very handy for me. I thought you might like to see it. But you can use this little portable circuit uh, in other projects and, and uh, push a uh, square wave into a different part of another circuit. And uh, I'll show you that here. I'll, give me a second. I'll reconnect something, and we'll take a look. Okay, so I hooked up this other uh, prototype board, and uh, what I've done is I've disconnected the battery, and 
The circuit sort of looks like this right now. And one thing that I've changed here is I've run a jumper from the output of this opto isolator over to this um, transistor on the other board and I've got a light bulb there and I'm putting in uh, 9 volts here because I don't want this bulb to be too bright um, and of course now this battery is disconnected and actually this part of the original circuit is not really it's doing anything. It's redundant. I could I could pull this transistor out and everything would work the same. So so now you see that the uh, uh, pulse circuit here that requires very little current. We're driving this transistor here on this side and lighting this automotive bulb, which takes somewhere around 250 milliamps, something like that. But you could use you could use something that takes a lot more current, about as much as this. Uh, little NPN here will uh, handle. And, of course, if you jack up the frequency uh, and change the duty cycle, you could, uh, you could, you could uh, run a motor, you know, a DC motor, and control the speed of it. So uh, I'm going to move on to one more thing, and uh, it's something that I promised uh, IC station people, that I'd try to make a, uh, um, a cap dump circuit using this inexpensive... Uh, uh, module. So I'll get on to that. Okay, I promised a unique demonstration with this uh, 555 type uh, uh, timer circuit and uh, so I'll explain something here. The uh, 555 became pretty popular in the uh, energy uh, uh, research projects and people were using it as a timer to uh, charge batteries by discharging a capacitor into them. Uh, now here's what I have here. I have my old favorite uh, stator motor that's set up with uh, uh, two uh, power coils and one trigger coil, but I'm using today both the power coils with my one coil uh, driver circuit that you can see in one of my other videos. And what we're doing is uh, running the motor with the one coil driver circuit. I'm uh, collecting the radiant energy from that circuit and we're putting it into a, a full wave uh, rectifier here. And from the full wave rectifier we have a, a circuit that is a transistor that can uh, discharge the capacitor into the battery which is the um, alum battery, crystal battery and I'm discharging it down to a real low level like in the 6 volt range and with that going on all the crystals in the battery have dissolved back into the uh, electrolyte. One little corner here still has some. Uh, you may not know this but this particular battery as it's depleted, the crystals go away as you charge it. This whole area fills up with crystals, almost solid. So that's kind of fun to use. That's just one of my favorites. So I'll unplug the little discharge bulb. And this will take the battery up and settle down uh, a little bit. Maybe I'll just stop the recording for a minute and uh, uh, let that stabilize. But uh, I'm not going to show this circuit or get too far in depth with it because it's a throw together and the video is really about the timer because you could do all this from this side right here and uh, not have this but I had all this set up for other experiments so I just slapped it together so okay I think that we settled down somewhere here around 7 volts uh, it's still rising a little bit, but you'll notice a difference when I get going. So I'm running the circuit from way over here at uh, 9 volts. And I've got the oscilloscope set up here to monitor the uh, discharge cycle into the battery. So I'm going to plug in the 
timer circuit here. And we're pulsing. And all I need to do is give this thing a whirl. And I can do this and, and still see the meter behind the, the wheel. Make a liar out of me. I didn't plug it in. <laughs> plug the circuit in. You dumb. Never mind. Okay, here we go. Now, here we go. You can see it's taking the charge pretty quick. Oh my, that's better than I've had other times. Okay, so we're pulsing. And let's take a look at the scope. I don't know how well this is showing you, but you can see the cap uh, pulsing and dropping about oh, another, I don't know, it looks like about 20 volt charge discharging into the alum battery. So it's, oh boy, I love it when a plan works. So there we go. That's charging quite nicely. So there's something a little bit new for somebody to see. What's nice about this is I'm charging at 9 volts, but I could, I could probably be charging the battery right now at 5 volts uh, on the uh, power supply. And what will happen here, even at 9 volts, this will go up to 12 or 14 volts, which, uh, you know, tells you that you could use solar cells that, are, that put out uh, voltage that are, that's less than the battery you're charge, charging, and the uh, pulse goes high enough that it will charge the battery. So, okay, I hope you guys liked the video. And, uh, you know, click on the link, even though you might not be interested in this 555, click on the link and go visit these guys at IC Station. They have an absolute ton of modules and uh, electronic components, and the price is reasonable. And they're good people to deal with. So, take it easy, have fun with your experiments, and I'll see. I'm going to come back with uh, some of these other timers I forgot to mention. They, they, they don't use the 555. They use something else that's a little bit more up-to-date, modern, and uh, I'll explain that in the next video. Take care, everybody.